This is Wellness in Recovery on COA Recovery Radio. We're here today with Wendy Rose and Sam Haynes of Heart Centered Healing Systems in Buckingham, Pennsylvania. They use IET, meditation, and spiritual counseling to help people find healing and move beyond blockages and challenges in their lives. They especially focus on the inner child. In this show, we'll learn more about what they do and how this work can complement other spiritual practices, including many that we're familiar with in the recovery community, like 12-step meetings and group work. About midway through the show, Wendy and Sam will also lead a short guided meditation that will help you relax and bring up some of the things you may be ready to release. Wendy and Sam, welcome to Wellness in Recovery. Thank Thank you, Allison, for having us. So how did you both become involved in this work? What led you to to what you do now? Why don't I... uh, I'll begin by answering. Uh, I... I would say um, my whole life has been one of um, uh, exploration of of what it is to be loved, and uh, wh- what I mean by that is um, I I had I- experiences very early on that um, showed me what love was. I have two amazing parents. I've got a wonderful family, and in a bubble of all that, surrounding that was a lot of pain. Uh, my my own mom uh, grew up in, in a very unsafe household, and 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 there was a lot of um, damage battles around me growing up. And, and I was well protected, and there were things that happened that um, certainly uh, you you can't protect your kids from everything, uh, no matter how hard you try. And there was a murder suicide in my family when I was seven years old, and. Uh, that one moment touched my life so deeply. I'm I, I'm still unpacking pieces of it and still um, finding the blessings in that journey as well. Um, it, it was an uncle and and a cousin, and that one moment uh, threatened to shatter the entire family apart on on many layers and levels. And um, and through the grace of God and the very hard work and dedication. Of, of aunts and uncles and my mother and, and my father. They put the pieces together in their own lives and uh, broke that pattern and cycle. They, they did not pass that one on. And I got a very clear um, picture of a healing journey, people actually living through it, taking the very painful steps. Um, so that when I faced it for myself as as a, an adolescent and a young adult, and as I, you know, as, as I continue into my middle years, um, I've, I've had to draw upon vast resources of outside support to get past my own demons that, that I generate, that I carry with me, that I found along the way. So that's what brings me to my healing work. Um, I, 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 I've lived pieces of it, I've seen it, and it's changed my life in ways that... Um, if if they hadn't, I, I certainly wouldn't be here to talk about it. So, and the uh, murder suicide was it your uncle who killed your cousin, and then he killed himself? Yes, yes, it was. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted. Yeah, that I can't imagine what that must have been like. Okay, that was terrible. <laughs> just terrible. And Wendy, what brought you to this work? What brought me to this work? Um, was I, through my childhood, um, I was severely abandoned and neglected. And um, I've always been a seeker of God, and that wasn't present at all in my household. And I felt very lost and very alone. And I had these core belief systems that this world is not safe and that I don't belong. And so, again, wanting to, to seek that, wanting to really just love and accept myself because I knew that I had something really important here to do on this planet. And I've always, um, the thought of being a teacher has always excited me, but not necessarily a regular school teacher, but a teacher of the heart. And I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I knew that I needed to go on a deep journey within myself because I know that that power um, that comes from being connected with oneself, that um, way of loving and accepting oneself is truly the key 
and so my whole journey has about, been about um, self-discovery and, and self-love and self-acceptance. And I've learned so many um, different types of um, healing modalities over 20 years' experience. And and with that, um, I have and and continuously, you know, healing that that um, those wounds that now right now um, it's it's so exciting to see that what we is our most challenge in our life is our greatest gift. And so if mm. we can overcome that huge challenge, the biggest fear in our life. That's what we're called to do is to overcome and to help others. And so that's what I'm here to do. That is amazing. Yeah, I know you both have a really, really impressive healing background. Looking at your website, everything that uh, that you've done in 20 years is a really incredible amount of time. Um, you really dedicated your life to that. So... Um, can you explain what is the inner child and how can it become wounded? Absolutely. Uh, the, the inner child is, uh, as, as, as Wendy put it earlier, we're talking about that, how, how do you explain what the inner child is? You know? And uh, she came up with a very simple way of putting it. It's our memories and experiences we have as children that live on inside each of us. Mm-hmm. Did you want to expound upon that at all, Wendy? Um, well, also I would like to say is that if we have deep wounds as a child and um, if we haven't really faced them or healed them in any way, then they will continue to hurt us, like haunt us, and affect us in our daily lives today. Yeah. And would you say most people, I, I don't know anyone who's had a perfect childhood, Really, I, I certainly did not. I don't know anyone who feels like there hasn't been something or usually many things from their childhood that they wish were different. So to what extent would you say um, people do have inner child um, issues, problems that persist into adulthood? Well, uh, all of us. You know, um, we, yeah. we, we create in our formative years our perspective of, of not only ourselves but the world around us. We make, you know, so many conclusions based on the experience we had as children, what's modeled for us, but also what happens to us. Uh, you know, our, 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 our parents can do their best and can clean up their own messes and, and, and um, do a, a, a superb job of, of bringing us into adults that not only alive and safe, but all, all, all together well adjusted, uh, and we can make a lot of mistakes in our own choices along the way as we you know, live trial and error. So we all come into adulthood with something to let go of and relearn, and uh, it, it's it's that process that is, is is at the core of our work with the inner child. It's about facing the past, looking at the past, addressing it and healing what needs to be healed so we can make the shift in our lives and now that's going to matter most. You know, because we can't fix the past and we can't deal with the future because all we have right now is the present moment. And it's making that shift in this moment around this issue. Triggers in our lives come up. Uh, maybe it's the type of job that we choose to pick and it, it's not fulfilling us and we quietly suffer and we, we, we create a whole string of events because we don't feel that we're either able to or worth what we really want. And so we live a whole life way off base of perhaps the life that God would intend for us or would, would serve that highest vision um, really well and fulfill us and make us happy too. You know, can we have happiness? Can we al- 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 allow ourselves to feel good? And sometimes yes and sometimes no. Yeah. Yeah, and in the recovery community, those those issues are huge. Um, everyone has different paths, of course, uh, different paths that led them to 
uh, their addiction of choice, substance abuse, and different paths that led them to recovery. But a lot of the time we do see that people use drugs, alcohol as a way to self-medicate. They have traumas, issues, hurts that have not been healed. So they use drugs to escape from it. So right. inner child work really goes to the core of how all that started. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, how do you? I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I I was just going to ride the coattails of of, of of your last statement and say I have never met a bad person. I've I've met you know deeply wounded people who make bad choices. Um, yeah. I don't believe that there's anyone out there who who starts out intending to do harm. Uh, we we can get caught up in our own patterns of of um, incorrectly fixing mistakes and creating other mistakes along the way. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what we say. Nobody intends to be an addict. You know, no child wants to grow up and become an addict. Nobody wants to grow up and do harm to others. We do the best we can, but along the way, if we don't have the tools, if we have issues and challenges that are holding us back, we behave accordingly. Yes, perfectly well put. So how do you heal? How do you help heal the inner child? What is one of your sessions like and, um, and how do they work? Wendy, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, so how the, the basic format works when uh, someone goes through the inner child program is that um, there's nine sessions, and each session focuses on a stage in our development from infancy to young adulthood. And um, the first part involves talking devices and intention settings. So it's more like a counseling type of setting. And the second part of each session involves the spiritual component of healing the woundedness. So in this, we, um, we do a, a guided um, meditation and visualization um, where we're there as a really strong support. Because as somebody goes through this program, and goes through inner child healing, um, we provide a space that's so gentle and nurturing, but very effective in um, reclaiming you know, that part of yourself. So the person is that, that is going in and it's like retrieving back that wounded um, child or, or that particular experience. You don't go through the whole experience again, but you go in and, and you change it. You empower that child. You only take that child in you. And so you, you bring that child into what I call the heart garden, and we're going to experience shortly um, going into your heart garden, what that is. But the heart garden is that safe, that sacred, holy place that lives within you. And so then you get to, with each stage, bring that inner child back into your heart garden where there's beautiful healing that happens and there's this, this reconnection. And so whatever it is that you heal from the past, from the, even that experience, will heal and change and shift and empower your present life. So maybe something that you've been so afraid of and limited your whole entire life, as you heal that, then it changes and then you're not limited anymore. So doors will open up for you that you never thought possible. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a multi-stage process. It's a series of sessions. Although I, yes. maybe some people need more or less than others, probably it varies depending upon um, where people are at and what they're working with. Yeah, and it, it's, it, it's been our experience so far is that everyone who's gone through our program derives exactly what they need from each stage. So, you know, mm -hmm. in, in one person's case, perhaps a, a certain style of abuse didn't start until uh, what we call the school age, you know, uh, at anywhere from, you know, seven, eight years old until, you know, pre-adolescence, what we call middle school, you know, first grade through seventh grade. And um, perhaps that's where it started for them. In treating with their infant and their toddler and, and their preschooler, there's other stuff 
that is also formative to other aspects. So um, while, while there may be one highlighted, very obvious uh, wounds to fix, you know, there are many, many, many other su supportive players that may go into validating a story of I'm not good enough. Um, so there, there's, mm. there's uh, n no motion wasted. There's, there's something valuable at each stage of, of development. Oh, interesting. So it may not be a single traumatic event. There may be other things that contributed to the overall situation, too, that maybe the person isn't initially aware of. Indeed. Hmm. Okay. Even if it's just the uh, fear of, of uh, failure, you know, yeah. just to draw draw a, a, a quick picture. If someone's bullied on the school ground as a kid, um, they may, that, that seed might become later on in life, I'm powerless. And then some big abuse happens that becomes the, the dominant highlighted problem. And the, the power and courage to say yes to, to the healing grace and move through that doesn't come into play because there's already this, this underlying judgment of I'm not worthy and, and deserving, I'm powerless, I can't do anything about it anyhow. And then that goes into, you know, not facing the issue. Wow. That, you know, that, that's really, um, I, I think that's really interesting, and I never looked at it that way before. So thank you. Um, okay, so from what I understand of your sessions, aside from the direct work with people and the meditations, you also incorporate IET, Integrated, uh, integrated Energy Therapy. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that fits in for people who aren't familiar with it? Absolutely. Uh, Wendy, again, do, do you want to start us off here? Uh, you, can, you can start and then I'll talk. Okay. Great. So IET, as you said, stands for Integrated Energy Therapy. And uh, so energy therapy, I realize, may be a, a new term to our, our audience today, as it was for me not so many years ago. What, what is energy therapy? And, you know, what is a hocus pocus? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. is it safe? Am I going to get hurt by it? Is, is there some pernicious quality that, you know, I can't trust? Um, and my answer to that, as, as I found in my own life, is it is a beautiful grace of God that becomes a, a, available to us through a host of angels that are here to support us. And the, the, the concept of angels is something I was familiar with in, in my upbringing, and, and indeed I, I, I also had some, um, I guess, supernatural or some spiritual, mystical it, it encounters throughout my life with angels, and, and that helps shape and form my open-mindedness to working with them. Like, well, working with the angels, what's that? You know, and is that even possible? Does that really happen? And, you know, in, in God's miracle universe, yeah, it, it, it actually does happen. So IET is a name for a modality that is working with what we call nine healing angels. It's nine angels that have um, been I, I, I identified um, through the work of one man, Stephen Thayer, who's the founder of uh, IAT. But these and angels, he's an engineer, as I understand. Yes, he is. I had to get in there, that in there because I mean, that's, right. his credentials are, are really important, I think. Indeed. His story is a really, really cool story. Maybe Wendy can, can, can share that with us in, in a moment um, to help explain um, uh, why it's so amazing um, that that, that this um, grace is actually here in our lives. It was this man's willingness and ability to, to uh, heal um, despite his own fears and doubts and an and entirely different style of, of life beforehand. It's not like he was already on his healing path and came across this because he's so holy. He was brought to his knees. And in that place mm -hmm. of being brought to one's knees is, is usually where we find the grace to say yes to what God's offering us. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to share that with us now, Wendy? Um, yeah. Um, Stephen Thayer 
um, again, is, is the founder of Integrate Energy Therapy. But the type of man that he was before any of this was, uh, and he still is an engineer, and um, very much just very a- atypical. He, he really didn't follow any particular um, path of, of, of God. And, but he, he held in him his wounds. And one of his biggest challenges was he had a, a problem with anger. And um, he worked in an environment that was a very stressful environment. And, and a lot of us do. But uh, this got him to a point where it affected his health. So all these held up emotions that he didn't believe in expressing himself because that that's not what a man does. Um, the way that he expressed himself was punching in walls. That was healthy. But he found himself in the hospital, and he was in his hospital room, and for the first time he prayed, and, and he asked God to please help him. And he, he shared that he had this moment of what he described as liquid honey, golden light that completely filled his entire body. And in that moment, he felt utter peace. He never felt peace like that in his entire life. And so that was the pivotal moment of, wow, God is present. And, and it's, I can feel the Holy Spirit touch me. And so that led him on a quest on a quest of many years to discover, okay, what is it um, about uh, um, healing oneself through the energy field? How can I do that? And so um, it was wonderful that he had the gift of being an engineer. He used that to his advantage to, to dissect and dialogue every little thing he could to, and all the information he could find out and to experience about energy healing and is there something to it? And he discovered that, yes, you can't see energy, but you can feel it because he had that moment of feeling, being just blessed and graced by the Holy Spirit. And so, again, that led him through so many different types of experiences to then birth what we now offer as, um, you know, integrated energy therapy. It's working with um, the angels and the grace and the light of the angel. And how do you incorporate, because you are a very expert, you both are very expert IET practitioners. How do you incorporate that into the inner child sessions? Well, that is, I believe, is, is, is the key, is, is, is the golden nugget. Um, because you can go through so much uh, talk therapy, and that's beautiful, but we want to get down to the core of, of healing and getting to the deep wound that is within us, whether we're aware of it or not. And so working with the integrated energy therapy, working with the divine grace and presence of the angels, it helps us to accelerate that healing and it helps to relieve and, and clear um, the emotional layer, the mental, the, um, the spiritual, and the physical. Because anything that I've discovered as I, as I do this work, anything that happens in my body that I feel physically, whether I get a headache or something feels uncomfortable in my body, it, is it, and I go into, okay, so what am I feeling emotionally? Well, what's my emotional thing? My sad? And what are my thoughts? Do I have positive, uplifting thoughts, or am I having negative, judgmental thoughts of myself? So there's that connection of you create your reality with your thoughts. So with IET, it helps to heal and clear. If there's anything physical happening in the body, well, let's go in and help to heal it, you know, the, the emotional wound and the mental, the belief system that really could be the cause of what going on with you in your life that's limiting you. Mm-hmm. And are these sessions compatible with counseling uh, and 12-step work for people who are used to sort of more conventional group counseling, psychotherapy, uh, 12-step groups? Is this something that would fit or is this kind of very different? It, it, it complements 
any other form of therapy very well. Um, in fact, we, we, we tell all of our clients who are you know, already in some form of therapy or 12-step program to continue that work. This in no, in no way is a replacement. In fact, it, it helps them to get more out of those other um, uh, vehicles for healing. It informs mm-hmm. them with more of themselves. And do you have to be of a certain faith? Like, do you have to be Catholic? Do you have to be Christian? Do you have to be of any particular religious faith? No. In fact, that, 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 that brings me to a, a, a point about IAT that I, I, I want to make sure is, is stated, is that uh, the, the only thing that we need to heal is a willingness to heal. Uh, God gave us free will, and the angels can only come into our lives, the grace of God can only come into our lives to you know, do its transformative work when we say yes. Our yes is our most powerful possession because we can either give it or we can hold it back. So uh, IAT is all formed around a- any session, whether it's w- within this program, this work we do, or even just as a standalone session. It always forms and revolves around the person's intention in that moment. What, what do they want to heal? What do they want to let go of or, or uh, bring into their lives, manifest? Um, what do they want to receive? It all works with the person's intention. So whatever faith background helps that person in their lives and is meaningful as a way of connecting with God, there's so many names for, for God. There's so many, you know, ideas and thoughts and, and, you know, arguments around what's the proper expression that everyone's covered. Everyone has a faith background. And IAT, the angels, God's support is here for anyone. So how, however you come to it, all it takes is just an open-mindedness, a willingness to receive a grace to heal and change in your life for something to become different than what it's been up till now. Do you have to necessarily believe in angels? No, no. In no. fact, uh, you know, okay. there's there's so many names out there. You know, that there's there's ascended masters, there's spirit guides, there's animal guides, there's you know, light, colors of light. There's so many ways of describing the very thing that we say when we say angels. Um, so we have all these names for the same players. Mm-hmm. And what kinds of people do you usually work with? Um, what What's your typical client? What uh, How do they benefit? What What are some of the experiences that you've had working with people? Well, there are some common themes um, shared by our, our clients to date. Sexual abuse is a, a strong one. Alcoholism is a, another one. Um, and, you know, as, as the dominant big issues, other typical issues are um, that they're experiencing strain in their close in, in important relationships due to, as Wendy mentioned earlier, um, not expressing their emotions, uh, you know, with, with um, honesty or, or feeling like they're worthy to have good things in, in their lives. Um, the usual gamut is, is is a combination of those pieces. Mm-hmm. So you have worked with uh, people who have addiction issues. You mentioned alcoholism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we we've we we we've had some some clients where uh, alcoholism was part of the environment that they grew up in, or that in their own lives that was something that was very active in in their life. And as they continued in their 12-step programs, they, they've, they've also found us and uh, been able to further their own healing in their relationships, work life, personal life, and um, have, have, have found the journey becomes um, lighter and more insights and blessings become apparent to them. They, yeah. they, so this is they get part. more out of it. Okay, right. Right, because I want to make very clear that we're not uh, claiming that this or anything else is a magic bullet. You know, nothing's a one and done. Nothing's, unfortunately, that simple. But um, there are many tools that can help, and this is definitely one of them. Absolutely. Exactly right. 
Yes, and I, I wanted to share um, one particular client who um, has had most of her life severe insomnia, and um, she would wake up in such pain because she would cleanse her her teeth from just the, the the her woundedness from the past, and so going through this program, um, and, and she was heavily medicated as well. Um, she dropped all of her medications, and um, she sleeps through the night, and she doesn't wake up in this this type of fear, like catching her breath, and uh, she wakes up now feeling calm, feeling peace, feeling safe. She said she's never felt safe in her entire life. And once she really healed that that wound from childhood, she wakes up feeling safe. And she doesn't clench her teeth. So then she's not experiencing that pain that she would feel in her neck and her shoulders anymore. Um, uh, yeah. That's, that's, that had to have that, been huge for her. That was huge for her. And then we had another... Um, beautiful gentleman that just went through the program and um, he was severely abused, especially sexually abused, and he just couldn't really even just share his emotions, just tell his own children or grandchildren that he loved them. And so he just completed the program and he told us not that long ago that he you know, has a son who's in his 20s. He gave him a hug and told him that he loved him for the first time in his entire life. Mm. And so again, that to me, that that's a quantum leap um, of, because then he, he found and felt that love for himself as he was going through it. And so then he could open his heart more to his children. And that was his, his intention and his goal. It's like, I, I just I want to be able to tell my children that I love them and, and to, to get on the floor and play with my grandchildren. And so he's doing that. Wow, that is amazing. That's, yeah, yeah, that is amazing. So, um, shall we do the meditation? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we'll, um, we'll do the meditation on air, and people can, the replay, of course, will be up uh, on the Recovery Radio website, and people can come back to this meditation and do it again over and over, I assume. It's not just the first time they listen to it. They can come back and, and do it repeatedly if they want to? Uh, yes, they can. Yes, they can. And then we also do have some, um, if people want to purchase, it's very, very low price, but yes, we do. Great. Yep, and at the end we will give your website information and we'll also put that on um, uh, the Recovery Radio Facebook page and some other places so people can connect with you if they want to. Great. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, and then after the meditation we'll also do a short wrap-up. Okay. Okay, take it away. I invite you to settle down and be still. Take in a deep breath. Now slowly exhale. Take in another deep and full breath. Now exhale completely. Continue breathing deeply and feel more and more peaceful and calm with each breath. Let the inner voices of your mind become quiet. As thoughts come into your mind, simply let them float right on by. Lightly acknowledge their presence and let them pass. Let your breath Return to a comfortable and normal rhythm. Imagine that you are surrounded by white light. The light protects you and makes you feel safe and secure. Imagine you are walking along a beautiful, well-lit path in a safe 
and serene place in nature. Feel the peace and the support that is all around you. Take in all of your senses. What do you see? Hear. Smell. And even feel. As you are walking along your path, you see an illuminated door just ahead of you. The closer you get to this door, you feel even more peaceful and revitalized. You're standing in front of this special door with healing light streaming out from all sides. You made it. This is the door to your heart garden. This is your true home where anything that you need or desire is here for you. You open the door now and you walk through and you instantly feel through your entire body and all your cells vibrate health and well-being. You also know in your mind and you feel in your heart that you are deeply loved and supported by the Almighty God. Notice your guardian angel is there with you now. This guardian angel has been by your side your entire life. Perhaps you recognize them. Your guardian angel is leading you now to a special place in your heart garden. As you walk towards it, you notice it is made of pure crystal. It is your special crystal healing gazebo. On the outside, it may appear to be a regular size, but on the inside, it may be as big as you wish. Step inside and feel the warmth, peace, and holiness of the space. Find a cozy place to sit or lie down comfortably. As you and your guardian angel settle in and feel deeply relaxed. You see and feel the crystal wall illuminate with bright healing light that is surrounding and embracing your entire body, mind, and soul. Feel the Holy Spirit present with you. And let it wash through you now. It may feel like a bright liquid healing light. Imagine this bright healing light settle at the top of your head. And now into your forehead. Now feel this bright healing liquid light move down to your throat and the back of your neck. Feel 
it settle on each shoulder. Feel the warm healing light as it blossoms in your heart. Now, feel it move down your ribs and into your belly. And down through your navel and into your lower abdomen and your root. As the light and warmth moves down your legs to your feet, begin to feel present and grounded. Come back to your breath as this healing energy flows into your life. Take in and receive all of the gifts, the miracles, and the blessings that you've re- received from this experience and from being in your heart garden. Thank you. That was beautiful, Wendy. Thank you. You're very welcome. So what kinds of things do people often experience in a meditation like that? What should people experience? (laughs) Deep peace and joy. Yes. Mm -hmm. People have experienced it for the first time in their life. It's like I never knew that I could experience peace like that in my body or that my mind stopped. The, the, the chatter completely just was gone. Mm-hmm. And, and a lightness of heart. There's, there, there's a, almost like a, 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 a glow about them, they're, they're, where before their face bore this, you know, mask of, of suffering and, and, and fatigue and all the, all the weight of that which we carry, afterwards, there's always this lightness, this, this lit, this um, smile on their lips, this, this, this easiness of the affect that shows me every time that there, there's something beautiful and at work in our lives and the um, keeps me coming back, and, and I, it's, it's the answer to my prayers in my life. Mm-hmm. And how about for people who had a little hard time getting started? Because for me, when I first started meditating, it did take a while to quiet the mind and really be able to have some of the more profound experiences that other people have had. What about if you're kind of a slow learner like me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a great question. I actually actively resisted meditation. I thought it was uh, um, a, a, a big trick by people who wanted me to get all soft and vulnerable, and I wasn't going to go there. I was, I was, I was going to maintain my edge, and I'm, I'm in control. Um, I, I, I didn't give that one up easy, and, and I value, I still value the best of those things. And what helped me was, um, was the same thing that always helps me, um, uh, there's something inside myself that I really want to hear and I want to listen to. So I it, it invite each person who hasn't looked at, at meditation before to let go of any preconceptions that you have around it. It is instead something that you are capable of within your own self, within your own style. It can reflect you. It should reflect you. That it becomes a way of you quieting your mind, whatever that may be. Sometimes it's, you know, going out in the woods was always a good thing for me. Whatever practice gets my mind quiet to where I can begin to hear 
past all the thoughts that are just happening and more into what I want, my silent prayers. And at first, it was a very loud scream. You know, it was, it was a very loud scream. And I heard that. And uh, when I did hear it, it first got in touch with it, it was uncomfortable. Uh, and so that was a lot of why I resisted meditating in the first place. It took me to the place that I didn't want to look at. Mm-hmm. So, um, and again, it's never one thing and, and, and there's no magic bullet. Our lives support other parts of our lives. So as I sought that quietness, other things, Things happened in my life that helped to support me achieving that quietness of mind. Uh, certain things friends would say, a, a book I would read that would, you know, turn on one little light switch and go, oh, I get that. And I would be able to sit in the face of my own scream inside and take it and listen to it and love it. And it grows naturally. There's no one moment where you finally started meditating. As soon as you begin to look within, you're meditating or you're praying, you know, say the rosary or the Our Father. I grew up doing that, you know, going to Mass. Any quiet time where you're disconnecting from your thoughts because they're just going to run crazy. Thoughts happen continuously. It's thinking that we are at choice in. So um, whenever we get to that place of being with our thinking, despite our thoughts, that's a place of meditation. And then we can go deeper into that. And eventually the, the storm does quiet down and we can hear the whisper instead. So for someone who's just starting to meditate, what should they do? Should they kind of set aside a time every day? Should they do it when they feel inspired? Um, what? How do you start? Oh, well- Go ahead, Wendy. One of the things I would I would say would be the the, the simplest is to um, be be in a in a quiet place and um, light a candle. A lot of times, it's really turn out all the lights and light a candle and just be present and and look at the at the at the candle and the fire. Um, there's something very soothing and meditating by just looking at a candle and a flame. That could be one thing, one way to start. Because a lot of people are very visual. It's maybe difficult or maybe a little scary just to close your eyes. Well, focus on something first. Focus on something that would be pleasant. And a lot of times I know a candle can be very soothing or light a few candles. And just mm-hmm. sit quietly and listen to relaxing, healing mu- music in the background. That could be one, one way of many ways. Right. That's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. Because I think a lot of people have a really hard time going blank, zoning out, because yeah. the thoughts always do come in. But having something there to look at, a candle, a flower, you know, something that will distract those, those thoughts, that's a great way to do it. Yeah, and then also it's very important to be warm and cozy. So this is something mm-hmm. that, you know, during the infant stage is like, you know, what what we we teach our, our clients is to wrap yourself in a blanket and and have something really warm or your favorite drink, you know, and then light that candle. So you're feeling your body feels warm. When you feel warm, there's a safety net that goes with that. Mm-hmm. And so, because that's that's the the healthy infant of being. So many of us in the society is just about doing, doing, doing. But really, meditation is is just about being and just being present in the moment and what what you're feeling in the moment. So, coziness and looking at a candle could be a beautiful gift. Mm-hmm. How can people learn more? about your work, about your inner child work and the other things that you do? Well, our, our website is uh, www.wendyrose.com and that is Wendy with an I, like Peter Pan, W-E-N-D-I-R-O-S-E.com. That's a great place to start. There's lots of information there about us, our services, and this program. Uh, 
they're also welcome to, to, to contact us. Send us an email. Give us a phone call. Reach out. And, and we're happy to have a conversation in any medium uh, to answer any questions they may have. Yeah. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for leading that meditation. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, your experience. Thank you both so much. Well, Allison, thank, thank you. you so much for having us. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's a real gift of, of love that, that uh, City of Angels is for your community. And uh, it, it's, it's inspiring and warms my heart to see that aspect rising out of the community to, 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 to bring the hope that is there. Yeah. yeah, it is. And I have to say so many people uh, have come forward to share their, their gifts, their talents, their stories, you know, whatever they have. And that's been amazing. It really is a city. It's more than a city. It's, uh, it's amazing to see so many people give so much of themselves. Um, it, it's absolutely great. Yeah. But thank you both. Um, this is Wellness in Recovery. And please check out the other shows in our archive. Good night.